anybody can answer this, I'll bring the mic to you so people can hear you and those online can hear you. Who is God to you? Anybody? Who is God to you? Pardon? My everything. Your everything. Anybody else? Who is God to you? Pardon? My heavenly Father. Okay. I heard it, but people at home need to hear it. <laughs> Anybody else? Who is God to you? Strength. Your strength? Okay. What is his relationship to you? Pardon? He's the Father. He's the Father. Okay. God the Father. Anybody else? What is his relationship to you? Supplier of your needs? Judy? Someone that you're learning to need more and more? Okay. Anybody else? Do you feel that you know God? That's an interesting question. Do you feel that you know God? What does it mean to know somebody? If, if, if I know somebody, it means I recognize them when I see them. I, I had a funeral uh, some time back. It was, was a uh, funeral for a person in the community. Uh, the funeral service was here in the church. It was a memorial service. And uh, about a week later, they had the burial service. Uh, the guy was cremated, but they had the burial service out in Aroma Park uh, uh, Cemetery out there. And about six weeks later, I'm walking through Walmart, and all of a sudden this guy goes, Pastor, hi. And I'm looking and I'm thinking, who is this? Oh, yeah, it's the son-in-law to the funeral I had. I knew him. I recognized him. Ask me what his name is. I couldn't tell you if my life depended on it. But I knew who he was because I recognized his face. Now, just a very simple fact, there's a difference between knowing about somebody and knowing them personally. I, I know about our president, for example. I know that we elected him to be the president. I know that he has huge decisions to make every day. I know that he gets up and talks a lot. Have I ever met our president? No. Do I know what he likes to eat? Yeah, he loves McDonald's. You know how I know that? It's all over the news all the time. He thinks he's a college student. He loves McDonald's. You like McDonald's? Oh, so you're not, you don't hang with Ryan. Ryan loves McDonald's and hamburgers. I know some people personally. It means that I know their likes, their dislikes. If I really know them good, I know their moods, their temperament, their desires. And if I really know them good, I can just look at their face and know what they're thinking. And I still like them. It means that we share things together. If I know someone personally to the point to where I know their likes and dislikes, if, if we're still friends, it means that we share some things together, whether it be shared joy or at times shared suffering. Think about that for a minute. Shared suffering. Sometimes we suffer together. Sometimes we rejoice together. I look back in the Old Testament and this whole thing about knowing God, and I look at this whole view of knowing God, and if knowing somebody is recognizing their facial features, it makes me wonder, 
How did anybody know God? Exodus 33, 20 says, No man shall see God face to face and live. So that means if I walk up to God and I look right in His face, I'm going to die. So how can I know God? What do I know about God? I find a whole bunch of names in the Bible that describe Him. There's ten of them in the Old Testament. Elohim. And I may pronounce these wrong for anybody here who's a scholar. Incredible power and might. Yahweh, the great I am, divine person. He just exists. Abba, Father. Does anybody know what that means, Abba, Father? Daddy. Daddy. He can be fully trusted. One that we can lean on. One who cares about everything that concerns us. El Elyon. God Most High. Nothing in life is more sacred. We all have things in our lives that are sacred. Don't dare touch that. <laughs> God's the most sacred. El Roy, the God who sees. He chases after us and follows us with goodness. He sees everything that's in our minds, in our hearts, our thoughts, everything that we do. He just knows all about us. El Shaddai, God Almighty. He's all powerful. He gives shelter and rest. Yahweh, Yairo, I think it is. The Lord will provide. He meets our needs. Men are studying Elijah right now. We're talking this morning about how God met Elijah's needs for food through ravens bringing him food twice a day. And how God provided his, his need for, for liquid by putting him right by a brook that was clean water that he could drink. I'm reminded in the New Testament, for us folks, Matthew 6.33 says, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added on to you. What are all those things? They're mentioned there in Matthew 6. Every need that we have, that doesn't mean all of our creature comforts, it means our needs, shelter, clothing, water, and I've added one lately, satisfaction. Yahweh Nisi, the Lord is my banner. I, I, I'm thinking about banners. You know, we, we have a sign out in front of the church that's a running banner. It advertises things. Uh, I'll be changing it to advertise next Sunday sermon sometime tomorrow. It, it, it just keeps scrolling. It's a banner. It proclaims. I think of God being my banner. He's proclaiming protection, leadership, and deliverance for my life. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you. Sometimes it's physical healing. Sometimes it's mental healing. Sometimes it's emotional healing. Sometimes it's spiritual healing. And the last word is Yahweh Shalom. Everybody should know what that is. The Lord is peace. And I'm reminded over in Philippians 4, 7, to go to God in prayer, to take every need to Him. And what does Philippians 4, 7, 4, 7 says? And you will receive the peace that passes all understanding in Christ Jesus. Now, with all of those things that knowing about God, it gives me a pretty good idea of who He is, of His character. I look at those in the Old Testament who knew God. Adam and Eve knew God, I and He created them. He walked in, the, the Bible talks about him coming into the garden and talking to them. He shared with them. I wonder, did they see him face to face? Evidently not. He must have turned around when he talked to them. I, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll, we'll find out out someday. I do know this, and, and listen to this, Genesis 3, 8 through 10, it, it's after Adam and Eve have sinned. They were hiding themselves because they were naked and ashamed. And the Bible says, they heard the sound of God walking in the garden. Now, we can be here at the church, and I can tell you, if it's different people here that I know real well, I can tell you who's walking down the hallway out here 
by the sound of their steps. If Marcy stays here and Rennell's here, which Rennell's, Rennell, you about live here some weeks, I think. She, she's here on and off. And, 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 or if Ryan or Jesse are here, uh, which, which they're here usually on Fridays, I'll be in my office and all of a sudden I'll hear footsteps and I just know whether to cringe because it's Marcy wanting something. She never yells at me, mind you. Uh, or or whether to look and smile because it's Rennell, or to laugh because it's Ryan and Jesse. I, I just know the sound of their steps coming down the hallway. And even if they try to come quiet, you know, you just sense that. They're there. Well, when I was a kid about, uh, oh, they tell me I was about two years old, uh, my aunt watched myself and a cousin of mine while our mothers worked. And uh, my aunt used to tell the story that, that um, it was in an apartment building, I think on third floor, and and they always had, you know, back before the days of air conditioning, uh, the, the windows were always open. And, and my aunt, and I can remember saying, Uncle Don's here to get Nancy because I heard his car coming in the parking lot. My dad's here to get me because I heard his car coming in the parking lot. They heard the sound of God walking in the garden. They were said been so close to God, they knew what his footsteps sounded like. Think about knowing somebody so well that you just sense their presence is there. Abraham knew God well enough to where he received directions from God. Noah really received directions. A verbal one, build the ark. And then all these directions. Moses, wow. Moses, he really heard from God. Ten Commandments. Think about that experience. And yet, here's Moses, so close to God and, and wanting the proof that it was God who was giving, going to give him the commandments, give him the direction. And he said, Lord, if I'm going to speak for you, I've got to know it's you. And that's where God said, no man can see me face to face and yet live. And yet he took Moses and he, he put him in, in, in a safe place in the cleft of a rock and, and let his spirit come by. And Moses saw the back of Jesus or of God as he went by, but he sensed his presence. He knew God. Uh, he, he wanted to see God, but he got to see his glory, which became the assurance that God was with him and the Israelites. So here, here's my point. I may not recognize God face to face, but I can recognize his spirit, his power, his care. His help. I move into the New Testament. Jesus comes along. The disciples in John 14 are talking to Jesus about, about um, knowing God. How do we know you're from God? What do we really know about God? And what does Jesus say? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Um, someone took a picture of me the other day. I don't know, it was Ann Schwab. She took a picture of me the other day uh, uh, so that, that if I call her, she doesn't have to look at my name. My picture will come up on her phone. Uh, you know, I've done that to people. And as she took that picture, she looked at me and she went, wow, you're becoming, well, you look more and more like your dad every day. Um, yeah, anyone who has seen me has seen my father. <laughs> I, I'm becoming more and more like him. If, if you know me, uh, you can know some about my dad. Not only are we beginning to look alike more and more, I'm finding myself, when I say things, be careful, Kurt, back there, don't laugh, becoming my father. I find myself doing more things that I remember him doing and so if you want to know my dad, just look at me, the sweet old guy. Kurt's back there just... Um, we think alike in a lot of ways. The, the kids uh, the other day, 
got a, got a letter from the school. The kids are doing this fundraiser, wanting us to buy magazines. And, and the, the letter to Marcy came to Dear Grammy. The letter to me came to Dear Grampy. And I said something to him the other day, and, and, and I think it was Samantha, who, who was the trader this morning and put her money in your bucket, called me Grumpy Grampy. Uh, I, I would like to think that I'm becoming more like my dad and mellowing out and becoming a little bit sweeter rather than grumpy, grampy. Back to the point. Knowing Jesus means knowing the Father. Jesus had an inner group. The disciples. Twelve of them. They knew Jesus closely and personally. I was reading early this morning about Jesus and the disciples and his relationships to different one of them. John especially was very, very close to Jesus. He knew him very well. He knew his thoughts. He probably knew some of the secrets about Jesus that he hadn't told anybody else. They shared a lot. They all, they all probably knew what Jesus liked to eat. They all may have known of any, any concerns that he had. Others had heard about Jesus. And they came from near and far to reap the benefits, the healings, the teachings, the feedings, the wisdom. But they didn't know Jesus the way the disciples did. They had heard about Jesus and they wanted to come and see this guy they had heard about. We do that. Some famous person comes to town. We've heard about them. We've seen them on TV. But for some reason, people just want to go. And so they, they go by hundreds of thousands of people sometimes to see the Pope or the President or, or some famous person just to get close to them. I remember when I was in junior high school or, or high school, I guess about ninth grade, our band was invited to go to the airport and play for, I think it was, it was whoever was running for president at the time. I, I don't even remember. His name started with an M, but I can't remember. And uh, I remember uh, when the band was done playing, standing by this security fence, and I was right at it, and as the guy came down the line shaking hands, he shook my hand. I remember going home and say, so-and-so shook my hand. Woo! What I really remember is there were Hundreds of people there that day. Not because they knew the guy. They knew about him. They wanted to support him. So you had all these people that heard about Jesus, and here they were coming from near and far because they wanted to be healed. They wanted to hear his wisdom. They wanted to see what was going on. Did they know Jesus? No. Did they know about him? Yes. The disciples knew Jesus. I think about the paralytic man being moved down, handed down through the roof to the feet of Jesus to be healed. Did he know Jesus? No. Did he know about Jesus? Yes. Did he reap the benefits? Yes. I think about all this. And I have to say, here we are, most of us good Christian folks, probably most listening online today are good Christian folks, and it's almost kind of like preaching to the choir. We know God. We know Jesus. We know who He is. We know the benefits. We've experienced it firsthand in our lives through salvation, sometimes through healing, through wisdom, at times because we cried out to God and He took care of a massive problems in our life and turned our life around and put it on a brand new trajectory. Even if we were already a Christian, He opened some door that we could walk through and we're praising Him because He made a difference. We know who He is. So I have to ask the question, to, uh, why does, what, what does God really care about? Well, I could walk around this morning and ask the question, why are you here today? Some of you look like maybe it's out of habit. Some of you uh, are obviously here to worship. Some probably, at least partly out of friendship. There might be someone online today who's looking in just out of curiosity. No other reason. Just out of curiosity. 
I often wonder if somebody new comes in, if, if anyone says anything to them about how they looked or act or anything. Uh, I, I've had people call and say, we'd like to come to church, but we don't have the proper clothes. And I'm trying to figure out what the proper clothes are. Now, when I was growing up, the proper clothes were, yeah, big bow ties, is that what you're saying, Cheryl? When I was growing up, the proper clothes were suit and tie. You didn't go to church without a suit and tie on. Most men didn't go to work if they worked in an office without a suit and tie on back in those days either. Now they go to work dressed casual. I, I've had people call and say, I'd like to come to church, but I don't have money, any money to put in the offering. Believe it or not, I've had those phone calls. And I've said, you don't need to have special clothes to come to church. You don't need to have money to put in the offering to come to church. Now, don't anybody quote me on that because the bottom line is always money. The point is, we don't care about your hair or your shoes or the color of your shirt. I'm just glad you have one on. We're just happy you're here. The point is, God does not care what baggage you're carrying today. He just wants to lead you to himself because he's a warm, caring, loving God. And that's what Jesus is all about, leading us back to God, not just for salvation, but every day of every week. And when Satan comes knocking on the door and he, and he, and he starts trying to tempt us to things, we need Jesus to remind us he's drawing us back to God so we don't give in to temptation. And when a day comes where, where I may not be feeling as spiritual as other days, <laughs> I'm not feeling well, or, or something has happened to knock me upside the head, or, or I'm just feeling rushed, I need that relationship with Jesus. And because I know Him, because I know the character of God, it just reminds me that I'm drawn back to Him to keep moving forward. I look at ways that we connect with God. We connect with Him through prayer. We connect with Him through fellowship with other Christians. We connect with Him through worship, through songs, through the Scriptures, through messages. And I've stopped and thought a lot about what is our view of God? I asked you what God is to you. I've asked some people what God means to them and and, and sometimes the answer comes back, a very strict disciplinarian who's out to get me if I do anything wrong. What was your relationship with your earthly father? You see, how I look at an earthly father has a lot to, to do with how I look at a heavenly father. Do I look at God as grumpy grandpa? <laughs> do I look at him as pie in the sky, gift giving, or overly disciplining. There's also the other side, not caring enough to discipline. God will let me do anything I want to do, period. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. When it comes to God, my relationship to Him, ask and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then... If you, then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask Him? God, taking care of us. We need to ask. He already knows the needs. And then I'm reminded that He's pursuing us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. 
There was Adam and Eve in the garden, naked and afraid, yet God was pursuing them. Yes, there was punishment, but He came to them, pursued them, worked on that relationship. And I'm reminded that every day God is pursuing me through His power and His might, His love and His care, through the message of His Son, through the filling of His Spirit, to transform me, to redeem me, to free me from sin, to keep giving me abundant life, and every day to improve me to become more and more like Him. Because I know God, He changes me. Changes me into who He is through His Son, Jesus.